In this video, we will discuss the Thermo Scientific 42 IQ Knox Analyzer. Upon completion of this module, you will have a basic understanding of the theory of operation, the ability to identify all major components, and the tools to perform recommended preventative maintenance. The 42 IQ operates on the principle of chemiluminescence. When nitric oxides react with ozone, they produce excited nitrous oxides. The excited molecules emit photons in the reaction chamber, and those are recorded by the photomultiplier tube. The light recorded by the photomultiplier tube, or PMT, is then used to calculate the NOx emissions. As you can see in the flow schematic provided from Chapter 1 in the manual, the pump is drawing on the reaction chamber and pulling through two capillaries. One capillary is pulling clean air through the ozonator assembly, and the other is pulling the sample. We will cover how to inspect and replace those capillaries later in this video. Let's review the basic layout of the analyzer. We can begin with the external components. On the front panel, we have the LCD touchscreen, power switch with LED, alarm LED, and a USB port. One of the major differences moving from the i-series to the iQ is the touchscreen interface. The new display can be broken down into three sections. On top, the title bar, which includes the home button, title text, gas mode, and help button. The middle, or user interface, includes calibration buttons, where you can calibrate the instrument, set up auto calibrations, and view calibration data. The data button, which shows real-time data and graphs, and the settings button, which shows real-time status and alarms, along with other diagnostic tools. On the bottom, the status bar includes a back button, access levels, health check for alarm statuses, a favorite button, and the current time. Moving to the back panel, we see options for RS-232 and 485, analog, digital, ethernet, and USB ports for communications. We also see power, two fans, and a PMT access panel. The sample manifold includes the standard sample and exhaust ports, but has options for other configurations. Refer to figure 7-2 and 7-3 in your manual for a component layout drawing. The major internal components include communications and supporting boards, ozonator assembly, NO2 to NO converter, PMT cooler assembly, reaction chamber, and the pump. Now that you have a basic understanding of the components and the layout, let's begin with some maintenance. First, the fan filter inspection and replacement. Then we'll move to the capillary inspection and replacement. Start by removing the fan guard from the fan and remove the filter. Refer to filter replacement on page 7-6 in the manual. The manual recommends cleaning the filter with warm water and letting it dry, or blowing the filter with clean, compressed air. We recommend replacing the filter yearly. Before beginning the capillary inspection and replacement, refer to figure 5-1 in the manual for an exploited view of the capillaries, fittings, and o-rings. Begin by turning off the analyzer, unplug the power cord, and remove the cover. Remove the fittings from the reaction chamber by using a 5 8 inch wrench, being careful not to lose the ferrule or o-ring. Remove the glass capillaries, ferrule and o-ring, and inspect the o-rings for cuts, abrasions, or discoloration. Replace if necessary. Check the capillary for particular deposits, and clean or replace if necessary. Replace the capillary in the reaction chamber, making sure the o-ring is around the capillary before inserting it into the body. Replace the fitting. Note that the fitting should be tightened slightly more than hand tight. Reconnect the tubing to the top of the fitting, being careful to insert the ferrule and o-ring properly, and tighten the knurled nut finger tight. You can now reinstall the cover, connect to power, and turn on the instrument. 